Hi, my name is Katherine Ellis. I live in the mountains of North Carolina in the southeast part of the United States. I'm a weaver and a dyer. And I want to show you a little bit about my process and approach to woven shibori. My first experience with woven shibori came with mokume or stitched shibori. When you look very closely at this textile here, which comes from Japan, you can see the little tiny rows of stitches and holes that were left by the needle and thread. Once many, many stitches filled this cloth, they were used to gather the cloth. It was dyed and those pleats and folds formed a resist resulting in this wonderful mokume pattern. But because I'm a weaver, I used my loom to put those gathering threads into the textile. While the warp was on the loom and the fabric was being woven, these green threads were woven right in. They are lined up very precisely because it's woven. And once it's off the loom, those threads are used to gather and the the pleats line up very precisely because of the woven structure. Once it's dyed, the resulting fabric will look something like this right here. Uh, this is not a woven stripe, but it's a dyed stripe, um, dyed with indigo. If the weave structure changes and the blocks are longer, and they move back and forth, a different kind of pattern will result. As the pleats are organized differently, it, the finished fabric will look more like this one right here. But things get really interesting when we start using twills and diagonals in the pattern. So this was woven in, gathered, and this is the resulting dyed pattern in the fabric. This whole textile on my table here is the result of different weaves and variations of weaves, all done with eight shafts on my hand loom. I've also been doing some work with a mill, the Oriole Mill in Hendersonville, North Carolina. They weave on jacquard looms and I have been able to scale up this process and work with more complex patterns on their looms. This cotton fabric has long floats on one side. Um, long floats on the back side, and then areas where there are short floats that move back and forth. This is based on a traditional overshot pattern. Once it's dyed with indigo, the variations of color is, are, are evident. Indigo cannot penetrate and dye both sides of the cloth when it's as dense as this. So this area here, the pleat was pushed to the top of the cloth, but the indigo was not able to penetrate to the back. So as a result, you get darks and lights and mid-tones in this process right here. The last fabric that I'm going to show you is woven not with natural or white cotton, but with colors. This used colored yarns in both the warp and the weft. Once they were gathered and the textile was dyed in indigo, many, many shades result. 
So I'm going to show you a little bit about my process of weaving on the loom and the resulting fabrics. And then I'm going to show you uh, how these fabrics are woven for me at the mill on jacquard looms. Once those fabrics come off of those industrial looms, I gather them by hand and dye everything by hand. examples of woven shibori that we looked at used supplemental threads in the weft going from selvage to selvage so that the fabric would be gathered in this direction. But right here what I've done is put my supplemental threads in the warp on this very narrow loom. These threads go over the cloth, they go under the cloth. So when it comes off the loom and I take those threads and gather, very deep pleats are formed that will act as a resist for the indigo dye. 